Good morning. Welcome to church in your living room. We are so glad that you're here. My name's Dave Lanto. I'm the lead pastor here at Victory and so excited that you can join us today for worship. Today's going to be a great time as we both lift Jesus' name on high, we hear from the Word. I just want to encourage you to get your worship on, be ready to be fully present and engaged, set your cell phones aside, be ready to just be present in this worship service because I believe that God has a word for you today. And so here we go. This is going to be a great time. First thing, I want to give you a few, a few announcements. First thing is that we have a new series that we're beginning today. It's called The Twelve. This series is about the Twelve Apostles, and we'll be looking at their lives from Scripture and, and learning some things about their lives that possibly break some misconceptions. And, and so we want to look at the 12 apostles, but also look at their lives as they relate to our lives right now and learn some lessons about following Jesus from the original followers of Jesus. So this is going to be a great series that we'll do. And uh, we, we invite you to be present each week as we do this series over the next uh, several weeks. Second thing, uh, new groups are forming. And as those groups are forming, uh, we want to invite you to be part of a group. And so uh, most will be online. Uh, there, we're actually, we have one in-person group in the works, and so we want to encourage you to get involved. The groups are forming. If you're interested in being involved in a group, send us an email to info at victoryanaheim.org. And uh, we can help get you information on what's going on and when the groups will start. Uh, stay connected on social media. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Victory Anaheim and at Lanto David. Uh, we always love to hear from you on social media and getting involved through, uh, through social media. Uh, we have a trunk or treat coming up for the season, and that's October 25th, 4 to 5 p.m., trunk or treat, drive through. Uh, it's going to take place in the par back parking lot at Anaheim First Christian Church, and we want to invite you to be part of that. It's going to be a great time. Come on out. It's just for one hour, 4 to 5 p.m., so make sure you, you put it on your calendar and that you, you come through between 4 and 5. Last announcement. Next week, one week from today, the church regathers. November 1st, 10.30 a.m., Maxwell Elementary School, our, which is our transitional meeting place, uh, while our new building is being built. Um, there's so many exciting things happening. God is on the move. God's doing great things in the life of the people of our church and, and through uh, us as a church, as on the whole. And we want to invite you to be part of it. And we want to invite you to be part of the regathering next week at Maxwell Elementary School. Make sure it's going to be an outdoor gathering. And we're going to use their courtyard at the, at the school uh, property. And we want to invite you to bring your own chair. Bring a lawn chair with you for each person. And uh, possibly you could bring a, a blanket to sit on the ground as well if you want to sit on the ground. But um, make sure you bring those. We won't have chairs, so, so um, we're not bringing chairs out. We're asking you to bring your chairs since it's an outdoor gathering. So bring your lawn chairs. Pretend like you're going to the park and come out to worship the Lord with us next Saturday, November 1st, 1030 a.m. And right now, will you join us in worship, lifting the name of Jesus on high? Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Where you move, I'll move. I will follow you. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone Higher than my sight High above my life I will trust in you alone In you alone Where you go, I'll go Where you stay, I'll stay When you move, I'll move I will follow 
follow you Who you love, I'll love How you serve, I'll serve If this life I lose I will follow you Yeah I will follow you Yeah Light unto Light unto the world Light unto my life I will live for you alone. You're the one I seek, knowing I will find all I need in you alone. In you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love How you serve, I'll serve If this life I lose I won't follow you Yeah I won't follow you Yeah In you there's life everlasting In you there's freedom for my soul joy, unending joy, and I will follow where you go, I'll go, where you stay, I'll stay, when you move, I'll move, I will follow you, who you love, I'll love, how you serve, I'll serve, if this life I lose, I will follow, one more time. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. Who you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you.
So I wait for you. I'm falling on my knees. Offering all of me. Jesus, your all this heart is living for. Overcome by 
time in our service, we'd like to just take a few moments to thank God for who He is by giving back to God. So at this point of our service, we do our our giving, and giving is one of those practices that God's people do with a heart of gratitude. And without a heart of gratitude, giving means nothing. And it's about that kind of a heart that says, thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for all that you've done. And so we want to invite you to give right now using our secure platform at victoryanaheim.org. Click on the donate button. It's a secure platform for your online giving. We invite you to give. In our church, we practice the tithe, which is a big commitment. And we want to encourage folks that have never practiced giving 10% of your income back to God to try to test out God. Because it's the only thing, giving is the only thing in the Scripture where God says, test me and see that I don't provide for you. And so we want to encourage you to give it a test for three months. Try giving for three months and see what God does and see how it changes you. God bless you as you give back to the Lord. Well, today we're starting a new series. This series is called The Twelve. And it's about the twelve disciples. And we're going to look at their lives. And I think we're going to learn some things about their lives that you've never learned before um, if you haven't spent any time studying their lives. And so this is going to be a great series. I'm excited to teach this series and, and to begin this series today. 
And uh, again, it's called the 12. And I just expect, like God did amazing things in the lives of the 12 so long ago, that God's going to do amazing things in your life and in my life and in our lives and the lives of our church today. So will you join me in prayer as we begin this message? Lord, thank you for how you work in our lives, and thank you for what you're doing in our church and through our church. And Lord Jesus, I just want to pray for each household right now, for every person and every household that is part of our viewership right now, I just pray that you would bless them. Bless them with a heart of gratitude, with a heart of abundance. Bless them with faith to believe. Bless them with determination to overcome every obstacle. But I pray right now as we begin this message and we talk about from doubt came hope, I pray, God, that you would be honored through these words and you would be honored as our lives are changed because we follow you. Amen. So this message is called From Doubt Came Hope. And doubt is one of those things that can surprise you, but hope can surprise you. And, and, and in this person that we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about the disciple Thomas, the disciple Thomas, who is often known as being a doubter. We call someone who, who needs proof to believe we call them a doubting Thomas. But I want to say that Thomas has been mischaracterized. Thomas was much more than a doubter. And I would venture to say that Thomas wasn't really a doubter. But he certainly was skeptical at times. But as you'll see today, this is a powerful, powerful message from Thomas' life. We're going to look at some passages of Scripture that show us some episodes of Thomas' interaction with Jesus and even the other disciples. And and I think you'll be surprised at what you learn about Thomas today. I want to begin just by reading from the book of Luke. So we have reference about the 12 disciples. We're going to read from the book of Luke, chapter 6 and verse 12 through 15. It says this about the 12 apostles, giving you their names. In those days, he went out to the mountain to pray. And all night he continued in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples, and he chose from them twelve, whom he named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and Andrew, his brother, and James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. These 12 are the apostles. And in many ways, we look at them as as, um, the founding apprentices of Jesus. And we, we take our cues from them about following Jesus. And, and so I, I want to begin by, we're, we're, we're going to learn about Thomas today. And I want to give you some things about Thomas. I'm going to give you just briefly Thomas's biography. Little is recorded about Thomas in, in the Scriptures. We, we, we believe that he was probably born in Galilee, uh, and, and he was born to a humble family. There's no indication at all that he was a fisherman, like several of the other apostles. He came, he, or he was a Jew, there's no account of how he became an apostle of Christ. He was just one of the disciples. We don't have record of his calling and how that happened. But the fourth gospel, the gospel of John, gives us a much clearer picture about Thomas. And, and so we're going to look at some pictures from the gospel of, of John today to learn about Thomas. Thomas is often condemned as being the one who was without belief, the one who doubted. But Thomas was equally courageous. Thomas was willing to stand by Jesus during dangerous times. He also was relentless in his pursuit of truth. 
like an, an inquisitive child who asked lots of questions, Thomas always had questions. And he is also the one who made this wonderful profession in the book of John. He said to Jesus, my Lord, my God, which is the clearest declaration of Jesus' divinity in Scripture. It was made by Thomas. Now, the death of Thomas took place because Thomas was committed to following the Great Commission. The Great Commission, Jesus said, go into all the earth and make disciples. Thomas was in Israel, and he said, I'm going. I'm going in, in answer to Jesus' call. And Thomas went. And, and, and we know that Thomas went to India. Thomas took the gospel to India way back then. Soon after, uh, in, the, in the years after Jesus resurrected, Thomas already ventured as far away as India to bring the gospel. Thomas was given the honor of being one of the twelve after that day that Jesus went up to the mountain. I love that, that scripture that we just read that it says that Jesus went up to the mountain and he prayed. And it says he prayed all night. Anytime I try to pray at night, I fall asleep. But it says that Jesus prayed all night. He prayed all night to the Lord, to, to His Father, asking for help in choosing from among His disciples, twelve, just twelve, who would be the apostles. And Thomas was one of those, given the honor of being one of those. And, and so Thomas died as a martyr. A martyr is someone who willingly dies rather than renounce their faith. Thomas willingly died rather than renounce his faith in Jesus. And church history or church tradition tells us that he died on July the 3rd, and he was pierced with a lance, a lance, a spear, in uh, Mylapore, India, on July the 3rd in AD 72. Now, we, Thomas deserves honor as someone who was a martyr. He died for his faith. He died taking the faith to people who had not heard. And people who did not want to hear killed him with a spear. I want to say a little bit more about Thomas's bad reputation. Soon after Jesus' burial, the disciples were together. But for some reason, Thomas was not with them. He was not present with them at that meeting. And it was a significant event because Jesus, the, when, after he had resurrected, he entered the room where they were gathered. And, and, and then afterwards, they told Thomas all about it. Thomas, the Lord appeared to us. He's alive. And Thomas famously doubted the resurrection of Jesus and he told the other disciples, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails had been and, and put my hand in his side where the spear stabbed him, unless I see and touch and feel, I will not believe, Thomas said in John 20. Then, Jesus appeared a second time to all the disciples. And this time, guess who was with them? It was eight days later. Thomas was there. Jesus, the, it says the, the doors of the room were shut. Jesus enters the room after seeing Jesus with his own eyes. When he sees Jesus, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. As soon as he saw him, he said, my Lord and my God. Jesus responded with one of the most powerful prophetic statements in all of Scripture. He said this, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas' moment of skepticism earned him the nickname 
doubting Thomas, which evolved into a term for anyone who needs proof before they believe something. But I believe that this, this is from a superficial reading of Thomas's life. His life really was not defined by doubt, but by faith. And so I want to say this to all the doubters who are out there, to all the skeptics who may be listening or watching, to those who need proof, I say this, you are not alone. Your questions will help you grow. They are not meant to be dead ends. None of your questions are dead ends. Far from it. Your questions can fuel your understanding and the understanding of others yet to find faith. So we're going to look at the book of John and get to know Thomas a little bit from his interactions. I want to say that those who doubt, there are the skeptics who doubt about God. There are those who lack belief in themselves. And then there are those who just doubt that God will deliver or can deliver in their situation. Doubt comes in these many flavors. But we're going to look at, at Thomas's life and gain a little something, a little perspective about doubt from his life. So I'm going to read this next passage, and it, and it comes from the book of John chapter 11, where, where we have Thomas saying, let us go that we may die with him. Thomas said that about Jesus. In John chapter 11 and verses 11 through 16. After saying these things, he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought he meant that he was taking a rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin said to his fellow disciples, listen to this. Thomas said this to the rest of the disciples. Let us also go that we may die with him. Let me explain. Near the end of Jesus' earthly ministry, some people in Judea were plotting to kill Jesus. And it was during this time that the disciples uh, Jesus and the disciples received news that their friend Lazarus had died or was close to death. And fearing for their lives, 11 of the disciples said, Jesus, don't go. Jesus, stay away from that town. Don't go anywhere near Bethany because they're plotting to kill you. You can't go. But Thomas, upon hearing Jesus, what Jesus said, I'm glad for your sake that I was not there so that you may believe. So let us go. Let's go to Lazarus. And Thomas then says, Jesus wants us to go. They're going to try to kill Jesus. And we're going to be in trouble because we're following Jesus. But you know what? Still Thomas said, let us go with him that we may die with him. Thomas was ready to die with Jesus. That's an important thing. It's a, it's a huge thing because um, it says something about Thomas that he had this allegiance to Jesus. He believed in Jesus so much at that point, that's before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Thomas said, let's go with him. And if we're going to die, we're going to die with him. That was Thomas. Have you heard that about Thomas before? Why don't we talk about that with Thomas? When the other 11 were afraid, Thomas said, let's go, even if we die. The call of Jesus is for your allegiance. Jesus wants all of you. You can't tinker around with Jesus. You can't take Jesus on as a hobby. You can't use Jesus as your plan B. 
To follow Jesus is to give him your undivided attention, your undiluted efforts, and your unbroken energy. Jesus wants all of you, you. Allegiance to Jesus is a life of courage for the sake of faith. It's a life of, a life of generosity for the sake of hope. And it's a life of sacrifice for the sake of love. Would you be willing to say to Jesus, I'm yours? I'm yours. Say it with him. Say it with me right now. Tell Jesus, I'm yours. That was Thomas. Jesus, I'm yours. Now we're going to look at this other episode. This is from John chapter 14, just a few pages over. In John 14, verses 1 through 5, Thomas said, we do not know the way. I'm going to read verses 1 through 5 of John chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. I went one verse extra there. Jesus had warned the disciples of his imminent departure. And that he was going to his Father's house to prepare a place for them. He's talking to the disciples. The disciples were confused about Jesus' mysterious language here. I'm going to this place to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas, uh, Jesus, we don't know the way. How can we know the way? What is the way? And the disciples in their confusion, but everyone was silent. Thomas, confused, not understanding, but he's like, Jesus? I don't get it. And when Jesus answered, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, think about that. That's one of the, one of the, the, the verses that we most quote about Jesus. And it was, it was spurred on by Thomas' inquisitive question. Thomas, Lord, we don't know the way. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, Jesus said. And, and so we have this, this episode from, from Thomas's life where he dares to be the one in the room who asks the question that everybody else is thinking, but that no one has the courage to ask because they don't want to feel dumb. They don't want to feel stupid. They don't want to be mocked. They don't want to fill in the blank. Listen up. Putting yourself out there takes courage. It does. And it takes guts. You risk looking foolish. You risk people making fun of you to be the first one to speak. But those who dare to speak when afraid are the ones who overcome fear. Those are the ones, the ones who overcome fear are the ones who experience breakthroughs. You don't experience those kind of breakthroughs unless you're willing to put yourself out there. And that's an important thing. Thomas put himself out there. And he was first in line to put himself out there. Now, we're going to look at one other episode from Thomas's life. This is from the book of John, chapter 20. And I'm going to read verses uh, 24 through 29 from chapter 20. And this is where Thomas said, unless I see, I will never believe. So starting at verse 24. Now, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand 
and to his side, I will never believe. Be careful what you say, Thomas. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them, and he said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Jesus went to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it on my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas's skepticism is not the same as worldly opposition, the worldly opposition to the truth. His doubts represent a genuine truth-loving quest. When Thomas told the other disciples that he needed proof to believe Jesus had resurrected from the dead, he was speaking honestly. So check this out. Sincere faith does not discount sincere investigation. Sincere faith never discounts sincere investigation. Eight days after the resurrection, the disciples were together and they, again, and this time Thomas is with them. It's no accident. Thomas is with them together again. Jesus appeared, invites Thomas. Thomas, touch, feel, see. Doubt is like a clogged sink. Once you express your doubt, it becomes the very barrier to your growth. But honest doubts and questions are no threat to faith. Christians need not be threatened by their friends' questions or by their children's doubts. The question is, what will you do after expressing the doubt? You who doubt, what will you do after expressing the doubt? Your next move determines if your sink stays clogged up or if the water flows. If you sit on it, nothing grows. In fact, you remain stuck in doubt like the clogged sink. Your faith begins to erode as your brain kicks in and tries to fill your unanswered questions. The way to unclog doubt is by discovering truth. Always. You unclog, you unclog doubt by discovering truth. And so be on a quest for truth. And it's not, it's not a truth. It's not my truth. It's the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only truth is Jesus. And Jesus calls those who would believe on him to receive him as truth. To receive him as truth. Truth is a person. His name is Jesus. By his own, by his own admission, by his own words. So like Thomas, when, we, when our faith is unclogged, when our doubt is unclogged, we will be able to believe and confess, my Lord, my God, in full confidence of who Jesus is. After Jesus confirmed Thomas' faith, he addressed all future readers of John's gospel with these words, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Many of us are those. In fact, all of us who are followers of Jesus, <laughs> we are those whom Jesus spoke about. We have believed without seeing because we trust in Him. We've investigated truth and we believe that He is the truth. And, and so there's an invitation that Jesus makes to all of those who have yet to believe. And it's to investigate truth. In the end, the nickname Doubting Thomas is rather an unfortunate one. It's true that Thomas demanded evidence of the miracle of Christ's resurrection before he accepted the truth. Doubt factored into his response to his friends. 
But it was not the defining quality of his life. Thomas should be better known for his loyalty, for his obedience to the gospel, and for his big faith. I believe. To those who are skeptical about God, are you willing to open yourself to God? To those who doubt God will deliver, are you willing to take a risk of trusting in God? And to those who don't believe in themselves, God believes in you. I want to take a moment for us to be able to respond to God right now. So I'm going to invite you into a prayer just for, for a few brief moments. We're going to pray. And I just want to be able to lead you in a prayer of faith where you can respond to God by putting your faith in God or taking a faith step. You may have been following Jesus for many years, but your faith has grown cold and, 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 and you lack the trust in God to take fresh risk today in Jesus' name. And I just want to call you, if you want to believe in Jesus, you can do so right now, right where you are. Just by, by praying this simple prayer with me. Close your eyes and pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that I can be forgiven for every bad thing I've done by your name. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you are the way. I believe you are the truth. And I believe you are the life. Amen. You know, there's a strange connection between Thomas and Jesus. You know how Thomas said, unless I feel the spear in his side, the, spear, the mark where the spear went into his side, I won't believe. And so at the end of Jesus' life, Jesus was stabbed with a spear. And at the end of Thomas' life, he was stabbed with a spear. And that's how he died. Thomas had the honor of being stabbed with a spear just like Jesus. Thomas was an apostle of the faith. Thomas was an apostle of Jesus. What's great about Thomas is that Thomas believed. Thomas overcame doubt and he believed. I invite you to overcome doubt and believe. Join us as we worship.
Jesus again. Your promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me. join us today for this worship experience. And I want to lay out this invitation. Some of you may have put your faith in Jesus today. And if you took a step of faith in following Jesus, I want to ask you to send us an email to info at victoryanaheim.org and let us know, hey, I, I put my faith in Jesus. Or if you rededicated your life back to the Lord, let us know, hey, I rededicated my life to Jesus. And we want to put some resources in your hands to help you follow Jesus. Following Jesus is not um, a, a single person sport. It's the kind of thing that you do in community. And uh, the church is the family of God. And so um, we want to welcome you home into the family of God. Because home is where we belong. Home is, 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 is with a people who are your people. And God's people are your people as you follow him. So God bless you as you follow him. And I want to send you out with this blessing. Children of God, you have the blessing. The blessing of God. In the Old Testament, we see these, the, 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 these times where, where sons sought the blessing of their father. Uh, and, and Isaac and Jacob both sought the blessing of, of Esau. Isaac sought the blessing of Abraham. The blessing meant everything to a son before his father passed. And I want to tell you this. The Father in heaven has blessed you. He's approved of you. He's given you all that you need to follow him and live a healthy, productive, satisfying life in Christ. You are blessed. Live in the blessing. Live out the blessing. Because you're blessed. Amen. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I'll follow. All your ways are good, all your ways are sure. 
sure I will trust in you alone High up in my side High above my life I will trust in you alone In you alone Where you go, I'll go Where you stay, I'll stay When you move, I'll move I will follow you Who you love, I'll love How you serve, I'll serve If this life I lose I will follow you Yeah I will follow you 